Good morning, everyone. Jeff Birch, pastor of Spruce Creek Presbyterian Church, here with you from the sanctuary of Spruce Creek this morning uh, on Saturday, not on Friday, with my good friend Sam. James is out of town, and so uh, Sam is filling in, doing the media work this morning. We're grateful for Sam and grateful to be with you uh, this fine Saturday. Hope you all are having a good weekend, and if I may, I'll invite you to join us, whether it's in person or on our streaming platforms, both Facebook Live and YouTube Live, to join us at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning for our worship service. We'll be continuing to look at Paul's letter to the Colossians, and this mo tomorrow morning we'll be in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. As always, the Kedley will be leading the Sunday School class over in the Fellowship Hall, or Zoom link uh, can be found in our email, and that We'll be going through the Westminster Confession of Faith. Feel free to join Vic and others uh, for this fine discussion as well. And we want to keep in mind to pray for Olivia Shirey as she is beginning her work with the children's ministry, opening up things like the catechism class and getting ready to open up Sunday school and nursery and things like that. Pray for Olivia and her team as they assemble and as they uh, get ready to, again, do gospel ministry amongst the children of our church and our community. What I want to do, uh, really, in these remaining weeks I have left with you is kind of give you a little bit what's my desire for the church. And the church, I don't mean just Spruce Creek, but I mean the church universal. My desire, I would love for us to be truly a praying church. To be a church on our knees. To be a church that cries out and longs for gospel advancement and kingdom advancement. I truly believe that grace changes everything, that if grace touches something, it changes something. It never leaves us the same. Grace transforms lives. Grace transforms individuals. Grace transforms families. Grace transforms communities and neighborhoods and cities. One of my favorite passages of Scripture, and I'm going to speak on it for a few minutes this morning and come back to it in our remaining weeks together, is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Verse 14 is very familiar, and I remember sitting in seminary class over 30 years ago at Westminster Seminary in Philadelphia. My Old Testament professor who was speaking on this verse that day was a man by the name of Raymond Dillard. I love Ray. What a tremendous, tremendous man of God and teacher he was. And Ray said oftentimes that this passage of Scripture is misunderstood when we use it in a kind of nationalistic way when we use it only to pray for our nation. Obviously, it has applications there. But he says, really what this is is prayer for the church, and it's kind of the covenant charter of the church. You know, it's interesting. Verse 14 begins, if my people who are called by my name. Who's it being written to? Who's it being spoken to? It's being spoken to by the people of God. This is not an evangelistic Text. This is not an evangelistic message. This is God's word confronting, engaging with, seeking to change and impact the people of God. In other words, God's saying that my people who are called, and listen to this tremendous promise from here, who are called by my name, that means who drive their identity, who, are, who belong to me, who are mine, who are called by my name. And then he gives this promise because what's the setting or the context for this text? These are the promises and the charter God is giving to his people after King Solomon has just finished the completion of the building of the temple. That place that's the meeting place between heaven and earth where God has chosen to dwell. That God says, this is, I'm going to inhabit my temple. And if you look with me at verses 15 and 16, he says, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. What is God saying? He's saying the temple of God is the power center where my presence, my attention, I'm going to be attentive to what's going on to the prayer in this place. This is, this is the place from which I am choosing to work from, advance my kingdom from. Verse 16, for now I have chosen and consecrated this house that my name may be there forever. Isn't that a precious promise? Where does God's name dwell today? Dwells in the church, dwells in the temple 
of God. He says, my eyes and my heart will be there for all time. God has chosen to inhabit, to reveal himself, to be in this particular place amongst his people. And it's from within that setting that he gives his charter. And I'll just introduce it this morning, but we're going to come back to it next week. Where he says, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will forgive their sin and heal their land. I will heal from heaven. My vision for the church is to be a praying church, a church on our knees, a church praying for gospel advancement, a church praying for kingdom advancement. And it begins with humility. It begins with reliance on God and his promises. It begins with dependence. It begins with being emptied of self, emptied of what you think you know, emptied of all the ways that you think are right in your own eyes, in fact. Reading the book of Judges recently, if there's a charter for the world and a charter kind for our for our nature, our own flesh, our own sinful nature, I think it's found at the end of the book of Judges that says, in those days Israel had no king, everyone did what was right in his own eyes. If that's the charter for kind of our self-determining, autonomous ways, what do we have here in the charter for God's people? We do have a king. Ultimately, our king is Jesus Christ, so we don't determine ourselves. We're not autonomous. We don't go our own way. We're called. We're inhabited. We're called by the name of God. We're chosen by God, consecrated to God, and we belong to him. We're anything but self-determining. We're identified by him, and our charter, rather than doing what's right in our own eyes, our charter is denying ourselves, emptying ourselves of us, Humbling ourselves, praying, seeking his face, his presence in all things, and turning from our lawlessness, our wickedness. Friends, we're going to come back to this next week. But for now, would you join me in having that be our longing, our vision? We're not going to be that creative a church, that ingenious of a church. I don't think our programs are, are supposed to be anything special. You know what I think we're supposed to be? A praying church. And I think when we're a praying church, we can be a powerful church. Because look at the promise it gives. God says, my eyes, I'm watching you. My heart, my ears, I'm attentive to the cries that you put here. I've chosen and consecrated this particular house for my name, my being, my identity to dwell in, to reveal myself to. The church is the power center for God to work and transform lives and communities today. Friends, thanks for joining with me this afternoon. I pray that the grace and peace of God would be with you always, and that you have a wonderful Lord's Day worship tomorrow.